Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we are finally getting a look at the new Transformers Studio Series 86 Grimlock and Autobot Wheelie. This Grimlock is an all-new mold that does its best to replicate kind of a mixture of the toy and cartoon appearance, which honestly makes its inclusion in Studio Series kind of odd because they're supposed to be all about screen accuracy. Also makes me think this was totally going to be a War for Cybertron toy before they shuffle things around, but I can't prove that, so, you know. And yeah, I mean, you can see he's a big old leader class toy, which makes me happy because these leader class figures have been quite small lately. And you can see he also comes with a non-transforming wheelie figure who has pretty limited articulation. Now, personally, I would have preferred if he came with his sword instead of a wheelie that doesn't transform, but he doesn't have a sword in the movie, so it's technically accurate, I guess. I don't know, maybe we'll get a sword down the line in like a new accessory pack or something. So, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Grimlock's packaging, then we'll open it up, we'll see the instructions, at some point we'll get a look at his backdrop, and then we'll see Grimlock himself in his beast and robot modes. We'll also see Wheelie. Naturally, I'll be doing quite a few group shots and comparisons today, and then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Grimlock comes in your standard Studio Series Leader Class packaging. Complete with all the branding, the movie call-out, in this case, Transformers the Movie from 1986. His official number is 8606, so he is the sixth and final figure in the first wave of Studio Series 86 toys. You get this really nice artwork of the pair here on the front. Then you can see the toys themselves. Grimlock taking up the overwhelming majority of the inner packaging and wheelie just kind of hanging out. Get a sneak preview of the backdrop there. Here you get a close up of the two. Then on the back, you get renders of the toys beast mode, robot mode. And you can see the renders are a bit different from the final product. They use a much lighter yellow some more clear around the neck area and they don't use the darkened window over the chest but overall it's mostly the same they show off the backdrop here which is officially called mockery of justice so that's kind of perfect it's these two crashing the uh quinison trial of hot rod and cup which means that this also plays really well with the uh, pit of judgment set Maybe I'll do a group shot there with those figures. That'd be neat. You can see that Grimlock takes 24 steps to transform, which isn't that complex for a leader, but because this is a recreation of the original design, which in of itself wasn't very complicated, it kind of makes sense, right? Don't fix what's not broken. You can also see that my box is uh, pretty well bashed in here in the bottom. That's how I found it on the shelf. I uh, got this at a Walmart, by the way. And, you know, it's annoying, but I'm just happy to have this because I've been looking everywhere for this toy. And I really didn't want to wait for the uh, supposed, was it May time frame that online retailers are giving this? So, turn this to the side and you get more of a full body shot of these two, along with the little 86 here at the top. All right, now let's go ahead and open these guys up. Okay, here we have our instruction book for Grimlock. You see this nice render of him and Wheelie on the front. Got all the numbering, branding, all that fun stuff, their names. We'll open this up. Get Grimlock by himself and his transformation from robot to beast mode, which continues around the back here, like so. Shows you his weapon storage, how all that works. Shows you where to store his weapon in robot mode or have him wield it. And then shows you where you can place Wheelie. So, I mean, just kind of loosely setting them on different places. So, there is that. Okay, now we get Grimlock in his beast mode, along with Wheelie hanging out. Let's take a quick look at Wheelie first, before we get into Grimlock too much. So, you can see most of his body is ball jointed. He's got ball joints on the hips, and on the shoulders. And even got a bit of a gap here, so you can like roll his shoulder in. That's cool. Head's also ball jointed, so it has a lot of posability. 
His slingshot actually comes out of his hand, and you can see that his hand and his slingshot use the three millimeter system. So it's shared with like the core class, and he is roughly core class in size, so he scales well with those guys. Uh, you can see he's very simple, got a lot of hollowness on the inside of the limbs because he is just kind of a mini figure. Now, interestingly, he's got a little uh, three mil post right here on the underside of his thigh, and that's utilized for having him sit on Grimlock's shoulder in robot mode. He's also got these little holes right here, which are three mil ports, and I can't really find a great use for them. You can see that Grimlock has posts on either side of his head, but because of how wide his like, neck is, it doesn't really work. Like you can kind of squeeze these onto one side, but then wheel is just kind of hanging off the side there. I don't know if that's the intended use or not. Not really sure. Looks weird though. So yeah, wheelie, fairly simple. Not a lot to him, but he is very screen accurate and that is kind of the point, right? Now let's look at Grimlock. Grimlock, like I said, is a big boy and I love this. He is very poseable for one. Starting at the head, the head does move up and down, which is great. The jaw moves, obviously. What's really neat, you can see in here, he's got a little black uh, three mil post right here that you can attach blast effects to to simulate his fire breath. And to demonstrate that, I borrowed a fire blast effect. This is the one from Skylinks, Earthrise. Just kind of a very fitting one. Go ahead. Plug that on there. You get Grimlock using Fire Breath, or you could use you know a longer one if you want something a little more substantial, but it does the trick. Get into his neck. His neck is actually on a swivel. You can turn a full 360, which is really neat. His shoulders are these big, thick ball joints, which have a lot of friction to them. Makes them nice and stable. Hopefully they stay that way. And he's actually got bending elbows, which is really neat. The wrists don't move, unfortunately, but still, this is a lot more articulation than his dino arms normally get. Uh, looking on the back, you can see he's got these big hinges here, which kind of hurt the silhouette, but they're necessary for transformation. And he's got a big old thick tail to accommodate the nice cartoon accurate thick robot legs. So the tail's a little unproportional, to you know how it should look, but it's not that bad. It's not nearly as egregious as the Power of the Primes one. You can see he's storing his rocket launcher on his back. And the way that works is two little tabs. What's on there tight? There you go. So you got two slots here, two tabs on the rifle. You just push it in. And again, very tight. Doesn't come off easily. Which is kind of good, I guess. All right, the legs, they swing out on hinges, and then they go up and down, and they're on ratchets, and pretty strong ones too, which is awesome, because you want them to be weight-bearing for such a big guy. It's got a thigh swivel, and this setup right here is really cool. It's two hinges facing opposite directions that are utilized for his different modes. So this top hinge right here is used for dyno mode, and this bottom one stays locked in place for this, right? So it's nice and sturdy, but you can unlock it, and that'll be for the robot mode. The whole point of this, what this does, is that it makes his limbs more proportional in each mode. It doesn't give him legs in dino mode that are too short, or big ape-like gorilla-looking arms in robot mode. So it works out really well. And lastly, his toes even have articulation. And it's funny because they don't have to, right? They're normally splayed out in both beast and robot mode, but they can bend down, which I'm not sure what the purpose of that is. I mean, you can make them stand on a pole, I guess, like a parrot. Uh, they don't bend up in a way, which is what I kind of would have preferred, but they do move. I guess, like... He can simulate like a brass knuckles kind of thing with them, I suppose. But it's nice articulation. I'm not going to complain about extra articulation, yeah. So overall, I think his dino mode looks just absolutely fantastic. Again, even though the tail's a little bulky, 
to me, it more than makes up for it when it comes to the robot mode, which again, we'll see shortly. Articulation is just amazing for this guy. Everything you could hope for. Now the colors are interesting because they're not quite his toy colors, but they're not quite his cartoon colors either. They're kind of halfway between as far as like shading and color choices. So, you know, he gets a kind of a light gold on his different accents, the neck, the belly, the claws, which personally I really prefer over a flat yellow anyway. I think there's definitely such a thing as too cartoon accurate. He does have these really nice metallic blue eyes which are, you know, cartoon accurate, and they're just really cool looking. So got red detailing across the side here. Nice Autobot Tampo. The arms and some other miscellaneous pieces, as well as the tail tip. Instead of being done like a very metallic silver, they're done in more of a flat silver color. Now, one thing that's interesting right here, what forms a robot chest, you can see he utilizes a smoky gray window here, which is accurate to the toy of all things. Um, I don't know why they chose this. It wasn't in the early renders, but, you know, they decided to go with it, which is okay. The only problem is with the toy, his Autobot symbol would be right here, so this wasn't obscuring it. Well, they kept the symbol here, which is accurate to the cartoon, but covered it with this dark, like, window, so you can't see it very well. Personally, I would have preferred if they had just left this completely clear. It would have made this nice, cool layered effect, but... They didn't. Another thing I want to talk about is the neck. Now in those renders we saw where the neck was transparent, you could see some mechanical detailings underneath, right? It looked like different, uh, another separate piece of plastic. Well, you obviously can't see this here because it's opaque. I don't know if there's other plastic underneath this, you know, gold shell or not. Could be. I mean, there is, there is this bit of gray plastic coming up through a peg, so I'm guessing all that inner circuitry bit is actually still in there. You just can't see it, so it's kind of wasted. Maybe, maybe not. Might just be a very plain piece. Who knows? Not going to disassemble them to find out, though. And now, maybe the one thing I don't like about this dino mode, it's the screws in his face and his neck. You got three prominent screw holes here, right there and there and there. They don't look great. He definitely looks better from this side. And I really wish they could have found a way to do this without having just really eyesore-like screw holes just right on his mug like that. I really don't like it. Like, random screw holes on the body, I don't really care, but when it breaks up the face, it's, it's just a problem. I mean, as human beings, we recognize people and, you know, animals by their faces mostly, so it, it looks weird. It bothers me. Now, I mentioned how I think this guy was originally going to be a War for Cybertron toy, and there's a few things that back that up for me. One, just the level of surface detailing on him, it goes way beyond what the uh, cartoon ever had, right? So if he was going for cartoon accuracy, he wouldn't need all that. He'd be a lot smoother. This looks a lot more like what you find in the War for Cybertron trilogy. It's also worth pointing out the high number of 5mm ports that he possesses that are in pretty much all the places you'd expect them to be on a War for Cybertron toy. He's got them on, you know, the thighs slash shoulders right here. He's got them on the side of his robot legs, and you can't see them because they're covered, but he's got the holes on the bottoms of his feet. So I really think this guy was originally supposed to be part of that trilogy. So the downside of that is that he is a bit less screen accurate in a line that's supposed to be all about screen accuracy. But the plus side is, honestly, I just like the Kingdom aesthetic. I, I like the, the G1 with more detailing. So I'm all about it. Now before we get into transformation, I should probably show off the whole wheelie riding Grimlock thing, huh? Give the people what they came here to see. So again, there doesn't seem to be a reliable way to connect Wheelie to Grimlock in this mode. None that I've really found. So you just kind of balance him on there. He stays pretty well. And there you go. You can have him riding Grimlock into battle, shooting his little, I don't know, energy rock things at Sharktacons. And they work really well together. It makes for a nice complete set. Again, personally, I'd prefer a sword instead of a Wheelie accessory, but... It's okay, I will get over it. 
Here's a quick group shot with the power of the Prime's Grimlock, who you can see is noticeably smaller, being a Voyager class rather than a leader. You'll also notice that his detailing, both stickers and color choices and all that, are much more reminiscent of the G1 toy, because during Power of the Primes, they were really going for that G1 toy accuracy. And, you know, for some toys it works, some toys it didn't. I'm okay with it on the Dinobots. I know some people didn't like that, but for those that didn't like it, they do have the Selects version coming out very soon that does all cartoon colors. I will say, I personally don't mind this toy. I know a lot of people hate the Power of the Primes Dinobots because they are compromised by the combiner gimmick. It makes his proportions really weird. His hips are, you know, really set apart. He's got these weird combiner ports on his legs. Super wonky tail. I mean, he's not perfect. Um, I was more or less satisfied with these guys, except for maybe the scale, because they are supposed to be very big. Personally, I felt for Power of the Primes, the Dinobots should have been the Titan class combiner package. I think that would have worked a lot better. And then the Predacon should have been the like standard, you know, Voyager and Deluxe Scramble City type. But I also understand from a marketing perspective why that wouldn't work. So yeah, as much as I like these guys, this is easily an improvement over that design. Because again, it's not compromised by the gimmick. It's to scale with their figures a lot better. Again, I don't really care so much whether you go with like the cartoon colors or toy colors, either one's fine with me. But I do think the better proportions, better size, help this guy win out pretty easily. Now I had seen some people online mention that they hadn't seen any comparisons of the new Grimlock with the first Studio Series toy. So even though they're pretty different designs, I thought I'd show that off for anyone that wanted to see it. I will say this group shot does remind me that though this guy is much bigger than most of the leaders we've received recently, the AOE Grimlock is huge. <laughs> kind of forgot just how big this guy is. And Still one of my favorite Studio Series toys, especially, you know, within the, the Bayverse aesthetic. Even though he's one of the first, he's still one of the best. Really well done. But yeah, uh, you yeah, know, these guys, they're pretty cool. Love to see some little adventure with these two together, you know? Goofy Grimlock and serious Edgy Boy Grimlock. Now here's a fun shot of Grimlock and Wheelie confronting the Quintessons in their little pit of judgment. Again, these two sets just work really well together. Now, I left Kranix off the display because, you know, by this point in the movie, he's already dead, so... I'm trying to keep it canon, you know? But yeah, you can reenact this whole scene where Grimlock, you know, intimidates the Sharktacons and... <laughs> turns them around on the Quintessons, causing a rebellion. And if you want to get real nuts, you can put Cup and Hot Rod here, too. And one last group shot before transformation. This is the Titan's Return wheelie toy. It's a Legends class toy from a few years ago. Now, for some reason, a lot of people really hate this figure. I never understood that. I think it's really solid. Now, it does opt more for G1 toy colors than the screen accurate colors. So that might put some people off. But I think as a mold that has to, you know, transform between his vehicle and robot modes, I think they did a fantastic job with this. Now you can see he's a good bit bigger than our new wheelie figure. Even when you factor in the fact that he's in a permanent crouching position. So he may be out of scale with modern, uh, you know, deluxes and stuff. Maybe by a little bit. I mean, he's still easily core size. And honestly, rather than getting this minifigure, I still say they should have given Grimlock the sword and maybe just honestly re-release this toy in movie accurate colors and give him a slingshot, right? You could easily still sell that for 10 bucks and just make him his own thing. Maybe put him in, you know, put him as a Kingdom Core class and then he'll just work with, you know, the Studio Series toys. I don't know. I just, I found it odd that they would release a minifigure of the character when they have a perfectly serviceable mold right here. All right, now finally it's transformation time. So, you know, set your wheelie aside. If you haven't already, remove the rocket launcher from Grimlock's back. And here we go. So you're going to take his head, close the mouth, tip the head upward. And you're going to bend this back a bit, like so. You're going to separate his chest halves. And then you're actually going to swing them up, because they're on this little hinge here, which is really convenient. Helps get rid of clearance issues. That's really great. So you do that. Pull the robot head up, like so. 
and you're going to straighten his legs. So you're pushing this hinge until it locks into place on both sides, like that. Oh, kind of came loose already. Well, <laughs> you're going to swing this up and tab it, swing it up, push this up until these kind of plug in right there. All right, fix his arms, get him in position, and you're going to pop this lower hinge, like so. Get the bend in his arms. Flip his fists out, just on panels. If they'll let you, there you go. Kind of helps to push right here. There we go. So you got pretty much the upper body right here. And you're going to separate his tail halves right here, or the tips of his tail, and the panels that they're attached to, which are these. Kind of swing them out. You're going to use this double hinge to swing the very tips up inside, like so. And you're going to swing this out. And this is cool. They have these grooves right here that mesh with these little bits jutting out on the backs of his little hip areas. That's how you like the tail in place. So that's pretty neat. So go ahead and separate these. And you can see there's a little catch here for this lower hinge on the knees. So you're just going to push them in until they latch on. Now let's straighten his legs out. Like this. You're going to swing these back all the way. And you're going to fold these flat to form his heels. All right. I got all this. Swing the dino head the rest of the way down. It'll peg into his back like so. And we just kind of adjust the arms. Best way to go is to bend the elbows as far as they go and then stick the arms straight up. And here we go. Get them all posed up. Just everything, however you need to. And here we get Grimlock's robot mode. Now this thing is impressive. Like I said, it's very big for modern leader, which is something we sorely lacked in recent years. And his posability is through the roof. So he's got the ball jointed head, which moves very nicely. The shoulders are still the same. They ratchet back and forth. They lift up and down, bicep swivel, single band elbows here. He has wrist swivel, which is great. Again, the dino claws can fold in if you want them to. Again, they don't really serve much of a purpose in doing that. The back wings are on that hinge, so you can adjust them to Make sure he has clearance, give him a nice dynamic look, whatever you want to do. Got a full 360 waist swivel. Got hips that go back and forth. Swing out. He's got thigh swivel. He's got a soft ratchet in the knees, which again is great for stability. He's got ankle tilt. Not really any ankle rocking, but tilt is good enough for me. And yeah, he's the total package and he's huge. He's very solid looking too, right? He's not very gappy. Uh, the only real issue I have, and this is common in modern toys, he's got the hole in the forearms where the fists flip out. Now, it used to be pretty common practice, especially in bigger toys, to have a panel that would cover this up, but it's very rare nowadays. Hasbro just doesn't like dedicating the part count to filling those in, so it's a shame, and I'm sure some third-party companies will come up with fillers for it, but... It's something I'm kind of desensitized to, so I'm not going to, like, bash it too much. Just kind of bash Hasbro for continuing to cheap out <laughs> on these things. Now his gun. You can have him store it. The way you do that is you're actually going to hook it onto one of his dino arms. So you can see it's got this little semicircular groove right here, and it just kind of snaps on. So you're actually using the dino arm to hold his gun. That's pretty neat. That's... Fairly creative and outside the norms, I would say. I like it. You could also, if you want to, just like plug it in right here. Well, maybe? Nah, you don't really have the clearance for it. Scratch that. But that is worth pointing out, because you can see he's got the five mil port here in the back. I mentioned the ones on the shoulders, the forearms. He's got them on the sides of his legs, bottoms of his feet. So he is 
fully weaponizer compatible, which again, I'm convinced this guy was a kingdom toy or whatever, you know, that chapter of War of Cybertron was originally gonna be. Now, naturally, you could store his weapon, but we all know what we want to do. We want to have him wield it, because Grimlock needs his big gun. And I mean, look at that. He is easily a qualifier for Mini Masterpiece, and again, Mini may not be the best turn, because he's not small. Now, he is smaller than the Masterpiece Grimlock toy, which sadly I don't have. Um, but he does a really great job of replicating that design at a retail price. And I think in some ways he does some things better. He's just kind of, he's really thick, really full looking. I dig him. Now I talked about how you can have Wheelie sit on his shoulder. So let's pull out old Wheelie again. And here is the hole on Grimlock's shoulder that I mentioned. You just use this little peg on Wheelie's thigh to just get him to sit down. Pretty tight fit. It'll go. <laughs> you have to fight with it a bit, though. There you go. That's in there. All right. So. Let's get him all posed up here. All right. So you can get Wheelie sitting on Grimlock's shoulder, aiming at some baddies. And it's a really, really neat little pairing. Now, unfortunately, that peg only sits on the one side. So, I mean... I'm not sure how you get it to work on this side. There is a hole there for it, but how do you get him to do it without just kind of sitting backwards, I guess? I don't know. Either way, I think this looks really cool. And between these two, it's a really good way to flesh out the $50 price point. Here's a quick look at their backdrop. And you can see, just like for the Pit of Judgment, it's meant to be that inner chamber where Grimlock and the Dinobots come storming through and just lay siege to everything. Rescue Cup and Hot Rod. So we can put these two on here. I didn't show this in the Dino Mode because frankly, it just really doesn't fit on here in Dino Mode. They need to make these little platform bits deeper somehow. Like, I don't know, fold them up in the box or something. Because that's one of the issues I consistently have with these backdrops is there's not enough depth to the platform to get these guys to fit in one or both of their modes. So, it's unfortunate. But you can see, getting them to stand on here, they look awesome. Grimlock looks very intimidating, reaching almost to the top of his backdrop. It's just very powerful, and he just kind of looks like he's come here to take some names. So this makes for a very good display piece, and I imagine if you have the surface area, you could kind of set this up next to the Pit of Judgment display and form like a bigger diorama of sorts. Sure, it could be done. Here's another shot of Grimlock with his Power of the Primes counterpart, now in the robot modes. And I will say the Power of the Primes toy looks a lot better in robot mode than he does in dino mode. It's definitely the stronger of the two. But even then, he's got a lot of proportional issues. His chest is just massive for his body. and I mean, though it makes him look strong, it also makes him look kind of cartoony. And the other thing I really never liked about this toy is the fact that he doesn't come with any of his standard weapons. Like, it's bad enough the leader class doesn't have a sword, but this guy doesn't even get his rocket launcher. He just gets combiner feet strapped to his forearms, and they, they call it bucklers, but, I mean, it, it, it's feet. <laughs> he has feet on his arms. Uh, I do like the red eyes. I, I really prefer the red eyes on Grimlock over the blue, but that's a minor, minor thing. And to be fair, the blue that they use for this guy, just like with the Dino Mode, is really nice. It's really great metallic color. So, again, just like the Dino Mode, this new Grimlock takes the cake for being just the ultimate representation of the character outside of maybe Masterpiece. Here's the other Studio Series Grimlock again. And this is a good example of just the sheer liberties taken with designs in the Bayverse movies. I mean, this guy... <laughs> Looks nothing like the classic character. But, like I said before, he's still awesome. I really love the first Studio Series Grimlock. He did, like, some sort of magic to have a really great beast mode and robot mode that were, like, both really accurate. I dig it. And I'd say that both these toys are a testament to the fact that when it comes to Grimlock, Hasbro does try really hard. <laughs> like, 
they do go out of their way to make Grimlock toys really good. And most of them are more hit than miss, but these guys are definitely, like, taking the cake for their respective characters. And I think that about wraps it up for this review. We made it pretty clear by now that I absolutely love this set. I have no hesitation saying that this is the best retail Grimlock figure we've ever had. And can't really compare it to Masterpiece because I don't have it, but... I have almost zero qualms with how Grimlock turned out. You know, I mentioned my, my minor nitpicks, like the screw holes and stuff, and the open forearms, but being realistic, I don't see it getting any better than what we got. He's extremely solid in both modes. I, just, I love how chunky like the legs and the hips are and how robust everything is. You know, He's got the ratcheted joints for stability, tons of posability. And the wheelie, though, I could do without, does at least help flesh out that $50 value. And this is easily the best I've felt about spending 50 bucks on a Transformer in quite a while. Because he's just got, like, everything you really need. And I'm still holding out hope that we'll get his sword in, like, a second accessory pack down the line. I, I hope that's coming. I it's rumored... You know, there's somebody who claims to work for Hasbro that, like, leaked it, but there's no proof, so who knows. Um, but I'd love to see it. Hopefully they include bonus weapons for all the Dinobots. On that note, we do know for almost certain that there is a Studio Series Slag coming, who's going to come with Daniel Witwicky. Now, whether they're actually going to call him Slag in the final product, I don't know, because they tend to shy away from that name because it offends some people in the UK. But we know that guy's coming. He's supposed to be a leader class like Grimlock. There is a strongly rumored Voyager class swoop also coming, though I don't think we've gotten any sort of physical confirmation of that either. So it's almost inevitable we're going to get the whole team. Uh, I guess I shouldn't say that because <laughs> we actually usually don't get the whole team. Power of the Primes is like the exception. Uh, but it's, it's at least planned. Whether or not it pans out, we'll see. Um, so... I can't wait to get a full set of two scale Dinobots to go with this guy that all have the same matching aesthetic and all that. Looking forward to it. This is a really good first start and just a really just fantastic toy overall. Highly recommend picking this up. They're finally starting to hit shelves. Uh, online, they're still saying like April or May time frame for release. Whether or not it actually takes that long, I don't know. Um, I would start searching on shelves if, if you live in the US. Targets and Walmart seem to be getting them in pretty regularly now. Yeah, I mean, pick this dude up. He is probably the strongest entry in the 86 line so far. Like, Hot Rod's really good. Scourge is really good. The Deluxes are mostly good. But this guy is just amazing. And he doesn't have to be a Studio Series figure. He blends enough aesthetic to where he can just be seen as a regular Generations toy without, you know, aiming for screen accuracy. And yeah, I just, I love everything about this. Now, of course, that is just how I feel about this new set. Now, what I really want to know is what you all think of the new Grimlock. Am I overhyping him? Is he more flawed than I want to admit? Or are you just as excited for this toy as I am? Any and all feedbacks, always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this look at the new and awesome Transformers Studio Series 86 Grimlock and Wheelie. And with all that said, I will see you next time.